What is going on people? Joey Talks Boxing and I got a video, this one a historic video about the Mount Rushmore of heavyweights. When it comes to Mount Rushmore, it's always an interesting discussion. Different eras, different accomplishments, head to head, longevity, peak, how do you want to do it? How do you want to match it up? And these debates always get rather interesting. So I'm going to do this in chronological order. I'm going to give my four. Remember, it could only be four. That's what Mount Rushmore is. And I want to know what you guys think about it. So from oldest to newest, the oldest for me, the first one I got to say is Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis had the heavyweight title in the 30s and the 40s. Joe Lewis is the most amount of championship victories in the heavyweight division. The longest title run in heavyweight boxing history. And not just the longest title run in heavyweight boxing history, but that is the longest title run in any weight class in the history of boxing. You know, a lot of that's because fighters move up and down. Joe Lewis held the title. He had his loss to Max Schmeling, came back. And uh, the rematch, one of the most famous fights ever, and knocked him out in two rounds. A lot of people think that's the most historically significant boxing match, considering what was happening in the world at the time. He went on to beat a bunch of other contenders who were rated very highly at the time. Jack Sharkey, James Braddock, eventually guys like Joe Walcott, uh, and so on and so on. I think Joe Lewis is an easy choice. Many people will consider him the greatest heavyweight in the history of boxing. So sharp, every single punch. He had great balance, could throw every punch, overhand right, straight right, jab, left hook. Great fighter and uh, definitely deserves the respect that he gets. And maybe he's getting forgotten about because he fought so long ago. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, do you think Tyson Fury could beat Joe Lewis? Do you think... Uh, Deontay Wilder can beat Joe Lewis, that kind of thing. I don't rate Joe Lewis. So you know, I don't rate Joe Lewis as being on the Mount Rushmore because of his head-to-head. -head. I look at it more as the fact that his accomplishments are just so phenomenal. And I think in every era, boxing technique has improved a lot and gotten more advanced. I think boxing nutrition has gotten a lot better. And I think that over time, things generally do improve with the use of science and technology and research. So I know a lot of people are going to say, how could you put Joe Lewis up there? If in a head-to-head -head fight, there are a lot of fighters that could beat him. But I don't look at the Mount Rushmore as just that. I look at it as a resume accomplishment legacy type thing, more so than a head-to-head -head type thing. So Joe Lewis is my first pick. My second pick is going to be Muhammad Ali, formerly known as Cassius Clay. Muhammad Ali started his career in 1960, won the heavyweight title in 1964, beating Sonny Liston, who at the time was a big favorite, was one of the best heavyweight champions in history as well. Went on to defend the title a whole bunch of times, defeated a whole bunch of great fighters in the mix and uh, was definitely someone who left his mark on the sport, everyone would know, in a lot of different ways. Sorry about my camera. But uh, Muhammad Ali fought Joe Frazier, lost the first time to Frazier in the fight of century, but then he rematched Joe Frazier, beat him the next two times, the last fight being the Thriller Manila. He eventually, after losing to Frazier the first time, then he lost to Ken Norton shortly after that. Avengers lost versus Ken Norton. But then fought George Foreman for the heavyweight title in Zaire, Africa. And beat George Foreman. One of the biggest victories in the history of boxing. Uh, a lot of people didn't think Ali had much of a shot. And he was done. To beat a young animal like George Foreman. Unbelievable. And then he had a nice run after that. Beating guys like Ron Lyle, Chuck Wepner. Who they made a movie about called Rocky. For how well Chuck Webner did versus Ali. And uh, a lot of other very good contenders. Ernie Shavers was one of the guys he beat. 
great fighter, uh, the uh, first boxer at the heavyweight division to ever win the title three times. Uh, great, great fighter. I believe he has 25 championship wins, something crazy. His resume is nuts. And what really sticks out to me about Ali is if you look at his career, throughout boxing history, there's always, especially since Ali, certain fights don't happen because of the fact that just, I don't even think it's ducking. Sometimes it is ducking, yes, but a lot of times the business just doesn't work out. Politics get involved. Well, Muhammad Ali, if you look at his era, he fought everybody. I can't think of one fighter that he didn't fight that he was supposed to fight. And if you look at it, the man, his resume is crazy and the fighters he fought is just unbelievable. He didn't win them all, but man, he fought everybody. And I think Ring Magazine did a thing where out of his 61 fights, 39 of them were against top 10 ranked Ring Magazine contenders. People that were on the top 10 list. That's crazy. That's, I think, over 60%. And that was by far the highest of any fighter at any weight class ever to have that amount of uh, percent of their fights versus top 10 people in the Ring Magazine. So, unbelievable stuff. So, now we get to my third person on the Mount Rushmore, and that would be Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes came in after Ali and Frazier and all those guys. And he really held the heavyweight title and heavyweight division into relevancy when all these other guys retired. He beat Ken Norton for the title in 1978, defended his title versus Ernie Shavers, Mike Weaver, uh, guys like Tim Witherspoon, and fought the best of his era, Leon Spinks. Got the big super fight versus Jerry Cooney, was 48 and zero before he lost and he fights, was challenging the great Rocky Marciano's record. He lost to Michael Spinks in a close fight, which was disputed. Then the rematch happened, which was also very disputed. I think that was more of a robbery, if you ask me. Guy had 20 title defenses of his heavyweight crown, the most by anybody besides for Joe Lewis. Unbelievable stuff. And then years later, he comes back, fights Mike Tyson off of retirement, gets knocked out. But then he makes a comeback to boxing again in 1991 and beats a bunch of legitimate, you know, like not legitimate, but a bunch of tune-up fights. Then fights Ray Mercer, who at the time is a top five undefeated heavyweight contender who was an Olympic gold medalist. And he schools Ray Mercer at 42 years old. What an unbelievable win that was considering his age. And then at 45 years old, almost beat Oliver McCall for the heavyweight title. So Larry Holmes' longevity was crazy. He had a great jab, a great overhand right. He had a great uh, ability to recover, great lateral movement. And uh, he was one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, who I still think doesn't get the proper respect that he deserves because he followed up Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali was such a charismatic personality. And Larry Holmes wasn't as comfortable in front of the camera. And he didn't know how to handle himself as well. So it kind of made it hard for him to get the respect from the people and then when you add on top of that the fact that he so brutally beat Muhammad Ali I think a lot of people didn't like Larry Holmes for that reason they had a lot of resentment for towards him for that reason but the man was a straight beast man a terrific heavyweight fighter and should be celebrated as such so we get to my last person of the Mount Rushmore of heavyweights and for me in the 1990 and on era so I guess you could call it the super heavyweight era for me the guy is Lennox Lewis Lennox Lewis, uh, I don't think he has like 15 or 16 title wins. Uh, maybe not as long of a run as Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, or Larry Holmes. But man, he beat some 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 dogs over there. Evander Holyfield, yes, he was a little bit older, but he beat him for the Undisputed title. He beat Mike Tyson, who yes, was older, but he beat him up badly. Dominated a bunch of very good contenders. And like a lot of these fights weren't even close. Andrew Galata, Shannon Briggs, Michael Grant. I mean, Hasim Rockman in the rematch of the upset that he lost to in the first fight. Uh, I mean, we could, we could, you know, go on and on and on. I mean, the dude was a straight up beast. He beat a lot of very good contenders. David Tua, uh, even Vitaly Klitschko in his last fight. He showed a ton of heart in that fight, Lennox Lewis. I mean... Tony Tucker, Frank Bruno. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. The guy was a straight up beast. The guy had a very strong jab, tremendous power. 
Uh, very good defensively for a big guy. Can find the outside, can find the inside. Mentally strong, physically strong. The guy was an all-time great fighter. And I think in the modern era, he is the best fighter of the last 30 years in terms of the heavyweight division. And I think in a head-to-head -head setting, Lennox Lewis is the most dominant fighter ever when you consider the advancements in technology and the technique and also the sheer size and power of Lennox Lewis. So for me, that's my Mount Rushmore of heavyweights. Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes, and Lennox Lewis. Let me know what you guys think. Who should have been on there? Who shouldn't have been on there? Let me know more about what you guys think about that. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.